All right, let me start off with uh, the good news, right? And you know what my tagline is. MHC is COVID free. So that's the great news. Um, you know, and, and we really, we have to thank those heroes. I'm taking one mask down. We really have to thank the heroes here. That's, that's our staff. They have done such a phenomenal job as part of our Masonic family in making sure that we remain COVID free. And that, I will tell you, is a really, really difficult challenge. Uh, some of the latest statistics, of course, are really troubling, that most of the deaths are coming from senior living facilities just like ours. I was on a, a call uh, just yesterday with uh, a number of operators of other senior living facilities, and one that has been COVID free up until Saturday, last Saturday, is now experiencing an outbreak, okay? So we are not out of the woods yet, okay? Which means let's be sure that we're following all the rules. Keep our masks on, don't go out into the community. And I will say, especially for the next two to three weeks, we really need to see what the effect is of opening up some of the state. That's gonna be the next thing to be watching out for. So for another couple of weeks, let's really take the high road, let's be conservative. I know it's difficult, but here's the thing. Our entire staff is working very hard to find ways to make life better for you. Life in this stay at home, safe at home, whatever you want to call it. We're going to try to figure out ways to make this better. And that includes we are trying to find a really creative way for you to have your families visit. Okay? It is a challenge. It is a definite challenge. But now that the weather is better, we're looking at ways that we might be able to create an outdoor visiting area that would be much safer, okay? We have some support from the state who has mentioned that if we can find that type of solution, it might be supported. Because remember, we can't do anything unless we have the state's blessing or the county blessing. But we're going we're gonna to try to come up with a couple of solutions that keeps everybody safe. So we're working on it. We also have, as I've told you in the past couple of weeks, something called the Fun Committee. Now, I asked all the fun people to volunteer to be on the committee. And Kim is heading it up. Stand up, Kim. Give her a round of applause because she's responsible for your fun now. So if you're not having fun, it's Kim's fault. Okay, and David. She's pointing to David, I think she's trying. But, but we're really, really trying to get a group together to really think creatively on what we can do. I know being in those four walls, or eight walls, I think some people have eight of them, right? Maybe more if you count the bathroom. But I know it's difficult, and I'll tell you I know it's difficult because personally I'm having to do it too. This, to me, being out in the fresh air and here today has been the highlight of my life for the last month. I haven't even gone into a grocery store. So it's my office, my living room, my bedroom. That's it for me too. And, and personally, you know, my mother doesn't understand this. As you know, my own mom is in Lorber and she's having a really hard time because I can't go in and visit her, okay? But I have to tell her, I, you know, I'm, I'm not the person to be breaking the rules around here. And, you know, I do have to make sure that people see that I'm following the rules too. So, as I said, let's be patient, right? Let's, let's give it a, a little bit more time. And starting next week, I'm, I'm taking Monday off, which is Memorial Day, so you won't see me uh, on the video on Monday. But if any change in terms of whether there's a positive COVID case or someone needed a test or anything changes at all, you'll hear from me, okay? It may be a phone call, it may be a video, but you will know when I know, okay? I want to keep everybody informed. We want to be very transparent about what's going on and we want to keep everyone safe because that's our number one priority. 
But next week, I'm going to change the format a little bit, because some of you, I think, are getting bored of seeing me and saying the same monotonous thing over and over and over again. And I see some heads out there that are going like this. And trust me, I have a camera, so I'll know. <laughs> No, but I am going to try and make it a little bit more interesting, and I'm going to change it up a little bit, and I might do some interviews. I might do some video clips. And I might ask all of you to start thinking about what, what has this meant for you, right? But I also want you to share with us some funny stories, because I know there have been some funny stories, like me putting my scrubs on backwards, me getting used to a mask. So I mean, there are some things that, you know, there's a little bit of humor and, and we all have to find those humorous moments because life right now is really, really difficult. So in addition to that, the thing that I'm really looking forward to is the Heroes Parade. Now, Covina had their Heroes Parade and it's been filmed and we'll be sharing that with you. And I'll tell you, I couldn't, I couldn't watch it. I could not watch the whole thing. I had to turn it off. Right? And everybody who's seen it agrees with me. It's just very emotional. It really is. Because our lives, your lives, are so different right now. And it, it just hits home when you see something like that. When you see our, our Lodge brothers driving through and, and just showing their support for our staff and for our residents. So that's one thing that, that's going to be coming up, and it'll be planned for sometime during Masonic Homes Month, which is next month, and that's the month that our Grand Master has declared Masonic Homes Month. And uh, I think he's going to be leading the parade. And it's going to be an auto parade, so the automobiles will drive through because we have to keep a safe distance. And we have to make sure we follow all the rules. And the other thing that, that we are doing is on this plaza, you'll see there are a number of concrete pads. Those pads are for benches. Okay? We dedicated the first one to uh, De Malay last year. You might remember we celebrated that. The next one was going to be Job's daughter this year, although that's been canceled because of COVID-19. Okay? We're then going to be doing, of course, Rainbow for girls, and these are all to commemorate the 100th anniversary. And you see we have room for another bench. And that bench is, is going to be a time capsule of living in the time of COVID. Okay? Because we're not going to see another time like this, hopefully, throughout the rest of our lives. And things now have been so incredibly different for all of us. And although we've been spared and we've been fortunate, that's not true for the rest of our country and the rest of our world. As we look at approaching 100,000 Americans dead, we know that almost half of those have been in senior living. Half of those are seniors just like you and me who've given up their lives. And that's something I think we all need to think about and recognize. But anyway, for this time capsule, I would like you to start thinking about the stories you want to put in, about the items that represent this time. And it's not over yet. We've got a ways to go. And, but I want to recognize all of you and all of our staff who've survived, who've lived through the time of COVID-19, the year of 2020, which people are beginning to call the great disaster but we're going to survive. And there's going to be a time when we're going to be able to walk around again, when the sidewalks will be open, when the trees will be blooming and the flowers as well. And we'll be able to say, we've survived COVID-19. And we'll have a beautiful campus to do it on. So thank you for indulging me and in, in getting my video together for today, because now it's done and uh, we'll be distributing it. And I'm sure James is very happy that he gets an early copy of it. So once again, uh, I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all for your patience. I want to thank you all for, for enduring all of the things we've asked you to endure, to keep each and every one of you and us and our staff and their families safe. So thank you again. Thanks.